It is well known now that over the past several weeks, there have been two therapeutics that have passed randomized placebo-controlled trials for individuals late in the course of disease. One of these is remdesivir, a trial run by the NIH, which showed a statistically significant improvement in the time to survival in individuals who are hospitalized with pulmonary disease. That has now been part of the standard of care in individuals with moderate to advanced disease. In addition, a placebo-controlled randomized trial of dexamethasone showed an improvement in death rate in a highly significant manner in individuals on respirators as well as those requiring oxygen. And then, finally, the development and, uh, and testing of effective vaccines. Several months ago, we put together what we call a strategic approach to COVID-19 vaccine research and development. And the reason we did this is because there are multiple candidate vaccines that are moving along at a very rapid pace. And we wanted to make sure that they learned from each other. So we made standardized protocols, common data and safety monitoring boards, common primary and secondary endpoints, and common individual laboratory tests. There are three separate platforms that are being pursued with government help, nucleic acid, including the mRNA of Moderna, viral vectors such as adenovectors and VSV, and protein subunits. One of these is a, is, is a trial that started last Monday, the 20, this past Monday, the 27th, to beginning in a phase three trial. It's a trial that will go over several months involving 30,000 individuals. We hope that as the time we get into the late fall and early winter, we will have, in fact, a vaccine that we can say would be safe and effective. One can never guarantee the safety or effectiveness unless you do the trial. But we are cautiously optimistic that this will be successful because in the early studies in human, the phase one study, it clearly showed that individuals who were vaccinated mounted a neutralizing antibody response that was at least comparable and in many respects better than what we see in convalescent serum from individuals who have recovered from COVID-19. 